Hello folks, Richard here, and this is going to be the first in a series of videos where by popular demand I show you how to make your very own CSGO C4 prop. There we go, sorry it's a bit back to front in the camera. Um, I did a short on this some time ago and it's had quite a lot of views and it's had quite a few of you good folks asking me um, if I can do a tutorial on how to make one of these. So um, I'm going to do exactly that. Now there's quite a lot to talk about in terms of how this is made. So this is going to be spread over probably three parts. And the first part here is going to be just talking about this and what it does, how it works, things like that. Uh, the second part is going to be a bit longer. In the second part, I'll show you how it's actually made. So we'll talk about the 3D design. I'll show you Fusion 360, where I modeled it. I'll show you all the parts and how they fit together. and we'll talk about that kind of malarkey um in part two also i'm going to give you a link to the um 3d stl files and the cura slicer files so you can download those and you'll be able to print this yourself 3d print it if you have a 3d printer and then in part three we'll talk about the software the thing that makes it tick quite literally um yeah so part three will be all about the software. We'll walk you through the source code. I'll give you a download to the source code. We'll talk about how we got all the sounds into it and all that kind of good stuff. So here it is. This is the C uh, CSGO C4 prop. Now, I made this about two years ago for my uh, eldest son's Christmas. And uh, he's a big CSGO fan. So um, I thought we ought to have his very own C4 prop. And... Um, as I say, it's basically 3D printed. So it's printed from a material called, uh, it's Apollo X, I think this one. Again, we'll go into that in more detail in part two when we talk about the actual manufacturing, but I'll just walk you around it anyway. So um, as you can see, it resembles the, the C4 from the game CSGO. Um, we've got a keypad where you can enter the bomb arming codes and you can also disarm the bomb here as well. Uh, it's got a screen, cables, all, all sort of as in the game. It's got a genuine cable tie um, there, which does absolutely nothing other than be a cable tie. Um, we've got some also genuine gaffer tape holding it all together. You can see around the back here. Um, sorry, but getting a bit disorientated by the camera. There we go. Right. Um, yeah, there's a rear panel, so you can take that off to get inside and change the battery because it's battery powered or <laughs> mains powered. So you can power it from the mains, from the wall. It also has a USB port, which allows you to do programming on it and things. Um, but let's just see how it works, first of all. So to make it tick, we basically open the missile switch and turn it on. And there you can see the screen there. And it goes to its boot sequence. And it's coming up asking for a passcode. So the passcode for this, or the bomb arming code, rather, is... Uh, Seven three five five six zero oh, eight. Ah, oh, I missed a number. All right, let's try again. Seven three five five six zero oh, eight. Oh no! So now the bomb is counting down, and it counts down for about thirty seconds, which are thirty seconds, forty seconds, which I believe is as it was in the game. Um. And you can see we've got the red flashing LED and things are getting more frantic as it counts down. The uh, frequency of the beeps increases, and your heart rate goes up, desperately trying to get that last terrorist before you can go and disarm the bomb. But uh, here we go with less than 10 seconds to go on the clock. It's going to be a win for the terrorists. Ah. We survived. All right. So you can see now it's become a clock. So this is um, sort of dual purpose. You can use it for uh, CSGO type antics, or if you let it time out, then it becomes a bedside clock. So that's the current time here where I'm in, uh, in the UK. And there you go. So the alternative you've got as well is let's if we arm it so press a button and it'll go through its boot cycle again let it finish that off and we'll arm the bomb so seven 
three, five, five, six, oh, eight. Now, if you press any key, you can disarm the bomb. All right, there you go, and then back to the time again. So you, it supports sort of both things. It supports the bomb blowing up and the bomb being disarmed, and it also forms a handy bedside clock. Now, there's a few other things as well. So you can see that it's got a backlight, so the the, uh, the display is illuminated, and via if you plug it in via USB, so you plug it in via USB port, there's a little Windows application that goes with this that I wrote where you can basically set the time. So you can set the time if you've got daylight savings time, like here in the UK, the clocks go forward in the spring. So you can plug this into your computer, fire up the little app, and then you can program what the current time is. But also as a bedside clock, this backlight is quite bright. I mean, I think at the moment, this is only on about 20% um, uh, brightness. So this is really quite bright. So in the app as well, I also coded it so that you can set it so that the brightness changes. So at night it will switch to a lower brightness and then in the morning it can switch to a higher brightness if you use it at the clock. So again, that's why we've got the um, the mains, the wall power adapter as well. So you don't have to run it off batteries. So it will run off, um, it, it runs off an internal nine volt battery or you can plug the mains in and run it off um, a wall adapter if you want it as a clock, for example. Um, we've got the, uh, on the bottom of it, We've got the arming code. The way to remember it though is it's supposed to say test bob in leet speak. So 7355 is Tess and 608 is Bob, apparently. Um, no idea who Tess and Bob are. Um, I presume they blew up. Um, but there you go. Uh, all of the bits on it, all of the components, um, they all basically came from eBay. So the uh, keypad, the it's an Arduino Uno that's powering it. Uh, the screen, the missile switch, and the uh, wires with the banana plugs on, all from eBay. And as I say, we'll talk a bit more about it in, uh, in part two when I show you the internals and how to actually physically make it. So I hope you found that interesting. I hope you're looking forward as much as I am to getting the next parts done. And I can share with you um, exactly how you can make your own CSGO C4 prop. So until next time, thanks for watching.